Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome to my studio. <laughs> Not really. Uh, Garage Band Weekly is on the air for another week. In this week's show, we'll be talking about the Apple event that is happening in oh, less than 24 hours' time. Uh, we'll be talking about using multiple USB devices on your iPad or your iPhone, how you can get it done, what you can and can't do. And we'll be recording in uh, Logic Pro which is like GarageBand Senior, yeah? It's it's very similar, so we'll be exploring that mostly because it is Song Chamber. Yes, it is our Song in a Month Challenge Month here on Studio Live Today. If you want to find out all the goings-on, studiolivetoday.com slash songtember. That link right there will take you over and you can find out what it's all about. It is our Song in a Month Challenge. It's a lot of fun and a lot of folks are making some really cool music, which uh, we will celebrate and play uh, in just a couple of weeks time i know song timber came really fast and it's gonna go like that uh, we are brought to you today by me by the gear guide here on studio live today so if you're looking to up your gear game you want to get yourself a new audio interface a new mixer some new microphones a new guitar some monitor speakers some uh, like ink cartridges Whatever you're looking for, the gear guide has uh, links to all of those. And if you're doing your general shopping, you can dive in here to Amazon, Sweetwater, eBay, Thome, and wherever you go, if you click those links, they will break off a little chunk and send it my way. And uh, as I mentioned a few times, Songtember is an interesting month because we kind of go off script. I don't do my usual videos and I don't do a lot of the usual things I do to uh, keep the lights on around here. So feel free to jump on over to the gear guide, check out what we've got going on over there. And it's all of my gear recommendations as thomas says here it's everything that i use and nothing that i don't so there's nothing on that gear guide that i haven't either personally used or had a recommendation from someone that i know and trust that they use so you can tr trust me trust me yeah i'm, I'm so trustworthy I'm, I'm in a fake studio backdrop here because that's not what my studio looks like, as you know, if you've seen behind the curtain. We'll dive into the news and notes in just a jiffy, and then we'll get into some recording. But first, we're going to say good day to some folks who have joined us, who have been kind enough to join us here live on the show. G'day to uh, the Lily Pillies. Hello, Andy Cal. Uh, g'day, Jade Star says, I'm hoping to have your drums done by tomorrow. That is all good. We are only on the 12th of September, and uh, I'm I'm ticking along with all the other stuff I have to do with this with this song, as we'll find out in a moment. Hello, Ed B. Metal. Uh, good to have you on board hello to the wonderful mark bro our amazing moderator thomas christ is here as well al davis music uh leela is here hello to you i've said hello to the lily pillies kionra music's up early for a little bit of a little bit of garage band weekly hello redhead Det redhead detention i'm gonna get it eventually i'm gonna get there eventually hello joe and barry glenn i hope you are doing well and uh, anyone who's joining us that i haven't said hello to like emilio hello to you PJ, that takes me back. Uh, PJ used to be what I was called in my corporate world because there were too many Peters and Pete's, and I'm like, I'm going to go with PJ because it just sounded like uh, it sounded different and cool. And then a lady started in a marketing uh, division, and she's like, "Oh, hi, my name's PJ." And I'm like, "No, you're not. I'm PJ." It's like that George Costanza thing. It's like there can't be two T bones. <laughs> You're T bones, and then he hires Coco and. Seinfeld, hey? Nostalgia. Don't you love it? Uh, we are interactive here today, so if you do have questions, uh, we've got answers for you, or at least we'll try. Just put a big Q, a big chunky Q right in front of your comment. It means that I'll be able to see that there's a question there, and if I can answer it, I will. If not, I'll tag it, and we'll come back to it. So just throw your question out there. I may say, question tagged, hold your horses. We'll come back to it if I'm right in the middle of a big rant and rave, but uh, you are more than welcome to ask questions. In fact, we had a question on yesterday's show. Uh, hello, 
Uh, I have Ableton Live. Good stuff, Chuck. Uh, Ableton's cool. I just don't know how to use it. Uh, I'll let a bright example too. Uh, I had a question on yesterday's show, which is Your Music Live, which is not really the sort of show where I can answer a lot of questions. So uh, I, I thought we would start today by sort of answering this because I've, I've had this question a couple of times. And uh, if, if you've got other similar questions, let me know. But this will help because it'll show you what we've got set up here uh, for, for the, the recording today. And it'll also answer this question of how can you re connect multiple things to your iPad or your iPhone? So uh, why don't we why don't we get uh, past Pete in here? Past Pete! Past Pete, are you there? Uh, 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 yeah, there, here he comes. There he is with his big chunky finger, ready to tell us about what is uh, what is the setup that I use here and uh, answering this little question around multiple audio devices and USB devices in iOS and iPad OS. So take it away, Past Pete. Thank you, Future Pete. Yes, let's explain the setup here and talk about why we can only have one audio input and output device on an iOS device here. So I've got my iPad Pro, it's connected using the genuine Apple USB-C adapter. We've got the USB-C pass-through, HDMI, and USB on there. This USB is connected to this, the 10 DAC powered USB hub. I've been using this for years and years. It is reliable, it is easy to use, and the reason I use this is that I can plug in not only this, my Steinberg UR22C interface from the USB-C port, into that one there, but I've got three ports free here. So what I can do is actually plug in MIDI keyboards, USB mice or keyboards, USB flash drives, whatever I want. And you can have multiple devices connected up to the iPad at the same time. However, the warning there is you can only have one audio device because if you go to your iPad here, here where you've got the now playing, if you tap the little icon there, you can see here, this is the device I'm using. So if I had, say, a, a USB microphone or another audio interface, an iRig or something plugged in as well, I would have to select that. So at the moment, I can only use my Mac Mini Audio or the Steinberg UR22C. Now, here in Logic Pro, you can select different inputs and outputs. It's a little bit better, but you can still only use one at a time. So the question I get asked a lot is, if I want four inputs, can I just plug in two interfaces? No. If I've got two USB microphones, can I just plug them both into my iPad? No, you technically can using a powered USB hub, but you then have to select which one you're going to use as your input and your output. So you can only have one input and one output for your iOS device at one time. Now, if you're using a Mac or a PC, the story's a bit different. You can actually bring together and make a composite device out of multiple devices. The problem you have there is timing. So if you can't sync the clock, and that's a topic for another day, you're not going to get good timing. So you need audio interfaces that are pretty high level to be able to have multiple. So the bottom line is you just need to buy an audio interface. So iRig have their Quattro, Steinberg have the UR44, Focusrite have the 18i8, the 26i26. They've got a whole bunch of different interfaces that have a bunch of different inputs. So that's what you'll be needing to look for if you want multiple inputs and potentially outputs to use. You can only do it with one device. And here on your iOS device, you can only have one device going in and out at any given time. Back to you, future Pete. Well, thank you, past Pete. You're a gentleman and a scholar. So that explaining what you can do there. Uh, if you're using two interfaces in Logic for iPad, uh, proceed with caution because you're generally going to have some sort of issues with timing and with the latency. So if there's two different, uh, two different audio devices at the same time, you are better off just using one, even if there's workarounds and ways to do it. In GarageBand, you got zero chance because there is literally no way to use multiple devices. But yeah, just... just um, if you if you know if you need to have more than two things recording at once, you at some stage you're going to want to upgrade and get yourself a four input, six input, eight input device, and then you can just connect and, and go for it, uh, not have to worry around about syncing and connecting up different things. So that is uh, hopefully going to help folks out. But yeah, you can by all means. I think folks get confused because I say yeah, use a hub. I've, I've got a video where I say use a hub, connect it up, and you can connect multiple USB devices. And even though I say every single time, it's not a good idea to try and connect more than one audio input and output device at the same time. People like people do. So yeah, uh, I would go with that as your best option. Let's dive into the news and notes, shall we? Because guess what? We have an Apple event just around the corner, like Goldmark. It is just around the corner and we need to find out what they are going to 
announce. And that's what we're going to be looking at tomorrow. Uh, what went down, not the prices, that's for sure. But we've already got a comedian. I love it. Uh, so yeah, what went down with the Apple event? I'll be live around about this time, a little bit earlier tomorrow, just uh, talking that through. There was a time when I would get up at 2.30am local time and actually do this, uh, listen to the, the, the ranting live. What I tend to do now is wake up in the morning, watch the whole thing, and then straight afterwards um, make my notes and then do a little live stream about it. So if you don't want to have to watch uh, the, the hour to two hours that they usually do around what's going to be announced, and what are we getting? Well, it sounds like it's going to be the usual suspects for September. So we're talking iPhones, we're talking Apple Watches, we're talking uh, maybe, oh, sorry, we're talking maybe Apple Watches. Don't think we're going to get anything in the way of iPads or Macs. So is it really going to be that important for music creators? I don't think so. I mean, my I, I consider my iPhone is important for my music creation because I do a lot of stuff in iOS and in GarageBand and I, iPhone's always in my pocket. It's a, it's a great way to create. And voice memos is a great way to, to create as well. Uh, we will be getting new versions of Mac OS, iOS and iPad OS. They've been in the wild for a while now as beta versions, so we'll probably just find out uh, a little bit more about those features that are going into that. But if you want to find out in around about 30 minutes, instead of listening to two hours of superlatives, you can jump in and uh, and do that one with us. So, uh, yeah, I hope you can join me for that one. It's down in the description for ya. Uh, Song Timber. Uh, just want a quick reminder of Song Timber. As we mentioned before, you can jump in and go to studiolivetoday.com slash songtember. Find out all about what you can do uh, and how you can be involved in the month of Song Timber. And we'll get into my song in just a a wee jiffy uh, on that one. Um, we will also uh, we also have a couple of video notes here. So there is something there is something brewing, something coming that uh, looks like it's going to be very cool. I've had a little uh, sneak peek into it, and it is this. I've uh, thrown this down in the description below. Our buddy Papa Tom Tom Carraher has joined forces. With uh, JDL, Mr. Smith, Hugh Caldwell, Jamie Levitsky, Laurie Smishmosh, uh, Eddie Valdebenito Novoa. Uh, so, a whole bunch of, uh, of some of the folks from this community that do some cool things. And there is a premiere scheduled there for a couple of days' time. That is linked down in the description. And uh, it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. It's a cool song. And uh, what, what Tom and the crew have put together there, I think you're going to be very impressed with. Uh, the final thing I want to say is that yesterday I uh, was invited to jump in on a indie music round table. So if you're an independent music creator and relevantly the the round table that we did there i was there with with clay uh, from uh, the conspiracy music we've got trad freeman paul vault and, and quincy kane i had a chat with those folks other folks came in later i was there for the first hour and we we're talking about trolls and toxic uh, so toxicity and trolls and uh, why communication is key so it was a really interesting chat and a lot of interesting points raised around trolls and toxicity and what impact that can have on communities cuz really does really does put a little road bump a little a speed bump in the road doesn't it when you're uh, when you're tracking along and uh, you, you have people that uh, either want uh, extra attention or they want to bring people down and uh, like yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a tough thing because when you're in a community uh, you, you got to remember that I think some people uh, some people think that they're the star of their own little show uh, and that can be a problem so there's a lot of different ways that trolls and uh, people can yeah get under the skin of a community and uh, I've always said and hello to uh, hello to, to, to Chad here who has joined us here yes we had a great time in that first hour of the chat and I did listen into the rest of it but uh, really really cool uh, that uh, that we we got to, to get together with some cool folks and as Chad well and truly knows uh, communities running a community like this one or participating in a community it is more about the people and uh, they're led from the expectations are set by the people who uh, put the community together or who moderate the community and I gave big shout outs to this community to this YouTube community as well as the Facebook groups we have over the create record release and the garage band users Facebook groups because the, the people that we have running those, so Thomas Christ and uh, and Jade Starr, and then over on the Facebook, we've got people like Ron Ward, and we've got um, uh, Patrick from the Garage Band Guide. Uh, we've got a lot of really cool people, Jude Cabana, and all, all sorts of people that uh, just really help out 
I'm forgetting people. Steve Mara, I'm forgetting people. But uh, yeah, like there's a lot of people that come together and all have this sort of same purpose, which is to create a safe space where no one has to, people can share openly and freely. People can have their conversations and people can provide feedback. But yeah, as, as you probably know, if you've set foot, as I said in my podcast recently, if you've spent more than two minutes on the internet, you've come across toxicity and you've come across trolls in the community. And uh, it was interesting too, because I asked the question, because I've, I've never really sat and defined this. What is the difference between a, a toxic person and a troll? And it was really interesting that it comes down to the intent that the toxic person is literally trying to hurt people and make people feel bad. Like they it's almost that sociopath, psychopathic kind of tendency. Whereas a troll, could just be a misguided soul that's having a bad day or they just want to get a reaction. Maybe they're looking for attention. Maybe they just want, you know, we're doing a live show here with 25 people. If there, if there was a troll in here, it may just be someone that wants to keep making comments for just, just so that they are bubbling to the top. So, yeah, there's different levels, I guess, of that. It was really, really interesting uh, conversation. So, uh, yeah, jump over and check that one out. And a uh, huge thanks and shout out to uh, Mr. Chad Freeman for inviting me along. Go check out Chad and his channel. He does good stuff over there. Um, we will jump into the, the recording in just a jiffy. But we did have some questions that have already come in here. And uh, I will go to my little questions tab here. Uh, if you ask a question, I missed it. Uh, just re-ask it. <laughs> I like this one from the Mix Club. Is Mark real or could he be an AI? Now, I don't know the answer to that, but Mark has chimed in. Uh, yep, that's me. Nearly 65 and all original parts and still working, except the teeth. There you go. But um, uh, Are there any plugins or apps on iOS that can make you sound like a transformer? As in, um, now... Defining Transformer, Al, I'm assuming you mean more than meets the eye. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of vocoder type apps. And uh, I mean, I, I use basically stock plugins for this sort of thing. So there's the Vocal Transformer plugin that's literally called the Vocal Transformer, I think, in, in GarageBand that you can use. Um, but there are a heap of other apps, and I'm sure uh, so there'll be folks here in the chat that will have some ideas of if you want to do so. I know Jade Star. Go to Jade Star's channel. In fact, just go to YouTube and type Jade Star voice app or vocal app she's done like vocal live and a whole there's a whole slew of different um vocal apps that aren't super expensive you know between five dollars ten dollars that do a lot of that voice changing transforming type stuff so i'm sure uh you will you'll come across like five or six different uh, suggestions over there um chuck uh, who mentioned uh, using ableton having a difficulty with the learning curve yet yeah, stick with it Practice makes progress. Uh, we all start at zero, and I think everyone that starts creating in whatever platform, whether it's GarageBand or Ableton or Logic, I'm still learning Logic. Like Jade telling me that you can plug in two devices is news to me. Obviously, missed a memo on that one. Like I'm still learning stuff every day. Uh, and that's the thing. Like don't don't worry. Uh, I know it can be it can be daunting. You just hit something. You're like, oh my god, I'm so hopeless at this. No, we, we've all been there. Everyone starts at zero. So just keep trying and doing your thing. Uh, how do you automate rocking the wah wah pedal? Uh, Big Hal and Coyote. If we're talking in GarageBand, I'm assuming, um, let's let's fire up GarageBand, uh, assuming that that's what it is, because if we're talking, it is GarageBand Weekly, and if we're talking about using the wah, so the guitar wah on the virtual guitar, that's a lot of R's, so the guitar wah on the virtual guitar here in GarageBand, then uh, let's, let's load this up, and I'll, uh, I'll show you a little trick that, I, that you can do here. Uh, so, how do you automate it? You can't really automate it. You've kind of got to play it in. You, you, you can't use, um, wrong screen, you can't use uh, automation per se, but what you can do is you can play in your part, and then you can do your wah separately. Uh, so, let's show you how to do that. So, let's just say we're going to record in a little guitar riff. We'll just use autoplay to make it easier on us here, and we will hit the record button. There you go, just a little piece in there. Now, we didn't use the wire at all, and the wire was stuck down there at the time. But there is an option here in GarageBand, and uh, this isn't relevant for Logic Pro because we don't have the guitar in Logic Pro, not the, uh, the, the this guitar. We come here to Recording, and we turn Merge Recordings on. So just to show you that little where, where that is, so you're here in your, your, your track, you go into your Plugins and EQ, and then you tap on track settings and under recording, this will be merge recordings off as its default. If you turn merge recordings on 
for this one, not the multi-take, but the merge recordings, what it'll do is if we played, say, more notes over the top, it'll add them to this one. But it also adds any of our pedal moves. Hopefully they haven't patched this and you can't do it anymore. That would be really a sad thing. So now if we hit the record button, we can... Stop there and check this out. When we play it back... Look, Ma, no hands. And this works for any of your pedals. So if you've ever wanted to say, like say you wanted to, you're recording like a 90 style and you wanted the treble boost off for like the first couple of bars, you can do the same thing with that. So we record it in, treble boost is off. And then we want to kick it on. So it records any of the movements. You can use the same method for, for like knob control. So if we came in here to our keyboards, we wanted to use the classic rock organ, we can do the same thing here. So say we were playing at the organ here and we wanted to make some adjustments, we could just record in a part. And then we wanted to adjust the, uh, maybe the, the uh, what is it, rotation here. So we wanted to uh, record that. We just make sure again that we have our track settings here and our recording, our merge recordings on. We hit the record button and we can. I don't know why you would do that with the bars there, but you can see there that you can actually make alterations right here in GarageBand as you go along. And look at that. It records in all of your knob movements, all of your pedals, all of the effects that you add there. So hopefully that helps you out and was uh, what you were asking for. And if it wasn't, maybe someone uh, got a bit of a tip out of it. Uh, we'll, we'll jump back to the live chat and see what folks are chatting about. Uh, yeah, if you would like to learn more about GarageBand and more little things like that, uh, then yeah, jump on over and check out my GarageBand guide. Uh, it is only $10 and it is a, uh, a five hours of curated course content, which is cool. You can also use your mouth. If you've got a, um, uh, a later iPhone or iPad, you can... It can wah with your mouth. I think I did a video about it. Just, yeah, search Pete John's wah. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. It's pretty cool. Uh, apps are Pokemons. Robots are ubiquitous. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Vocal app playlist. Jade has done the hard work for you and got a, a vocal playlist. A vocal app playlist. Transformer. Yeah, with Optimus Prime or uh, Megatron. Who is your favorite Transformer? <laughs> There's an unrelated uh, unrelated question uh, for you for, for this show. Who's your favorite transformer? I kind of liked that um uh, the little is it Bumblebee, the one that was the the car, except they tried to make it too cool. Like the original Bumblebee was like a little V dub beetle and then they made it like the cool and new one and he looked all like super hyper but yeah uh, our audio interface with more than four inputs class compliant uh so the only one that i've used is the steinberg ur44 and yes that has six inputs even though it's called the 44 it actually has a a line input as well as four independent preamps and yes but they're a lot of them so a lot of the really high-end ones won't be class compliant or but steinberg are pretty good they they have a little switch on there a cc mode so look for class compliant mode or driverless mode or cc mode that's what you'll need for ios compatibility on anything over four inputs um i have hooked up my uh my zoom live track l8 and it has worked but it's it's got a really weird thing that if you're using it with ios you've got to use it on battery power which makes it virtually pointless because i'm not running it on batteries <laughs> uh and uh, chuck 50 i think was talking about uh lightning or usb so how do we hook up focus right to i2 to ipad uh so yeah just uh, go to um go to studio live today.com slash usb studio live today.com slash usb uh, if you want all of the details about how to connect stuff up because what i have there is 
all disk business. So there's the lightning to USB adapter for iPad or iPhone. So uh, demo of how to use it, USB drives, USB audio interfaces, how to connect them up and USB powered hubs and how to use them. So uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, you can do. But the short version of it is if you're using a USB-C device to a USB-C device, like an, a newer iPad, then you can literally plug it straight in. You should get enough power from that, but you tend to want to power pass through as well. So the best device to use is a little lightning to USB-C adapter that has both USB and a USB-C power pass through. If you're using a lightning based iPad or iPhone, you'll want the, say it with me folks, the lightning to USB 3 adapter, the genuine Apple one. If you use the knockoff brands, they are not MFI, which means used to be made for iPhone. Now it means made for iOS or iPad or iPhone, whatever. Um, but yes, you can go and uh, check that out. Uh, at studiolivetoday.com slash USB. Uh, imagine transforming into a cassette, not very versatile, nor mobile. Wasn't there one that transformed into a cassette? There was. Were, were there one? Yeah, I'm, I've got this in my head now that there were little cassette based ones that did that. Uh, Optimus Prime. Yeah, look, Optimus Prime. You can't really go faster. Big bloody bugger off semi trailer. <laughs> oh, Thomas has found my wiring with your face. Bumblebee. Bumblebee for Kionra. Yeah, Bumblebee is pretty, pretty awesome, isn't it? The OG Bumblebee. I love the OG Bumblebee. We're getting, uh, we're getting way off track. I should go and sh uh, shed. Look for my talk box. Oh, yeah. Can you feel? A bit like that. Uh, Why Logic Pro versus GarageBand? Uh, again, not, not to answer every question with a video, but we did uh, a couple of videos, so uh, I've got to find them now. Uh, if we go, Pete, John's Logic Pro GarageBand, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I would I would start with, if, if you just search Pete John's Logic Pro Garage Band, if you want to do some research, uh, check out this one. I had a chat with Patrick. We chatted for about 40 minutes about the, the differences, what's good, what's bad, what's otherwise between the two. And uh, this one here, uh, the Garage Band Weekly episode that we did where I compared and contrasted and uh, actually talked about it. And we've also got this one. <laughs> so yes, we talked about it a bunch of times uh, here on, on this exact show. But um, the, the chat I had with... Uh, um, Patrick was pretty fun. So if you want to go back and check out some of those, be my guest, be my guest. Uh, we'll keep the questions coming because uh, if you've got questions, uh, that's what this show is really all about. Yeah, you like my studio bear? I know, definitely didn't steal it from the internet. Uh, how could you achieve an elegant vibrato sound with something like a violin? When I try and sound, try and add vibrato to it, it sounds forced and crappy. Hmm, yeah, vibrato is difficult. Uh, I would say that using the GarageBand strings, getting a really, so there's a couple of things you can do, but getting a really natural vibrato sound isn't super easy. Uh, things like, uh, so I've used iSymphonic, I haven't used it in a while. That has some more detailed vibrato settings and I think Swarm instruments, uh, Swarm have some string instruments that give you more control over your vibrato. Jade Stars talked about, I don't know if she's demoed it, but you can use an expression pedal to control things like vibrato or uh, things like the rotation for your keyboard sounds. So that's another option that you have if you really want to use virtual instruments, but get more of that. You can actually dial it in with an expression pedal. Not sure if that's compatible with the GarageBand string instruments, but um, uh, let's just, we'll add some strings to this weird organ and guitar uh, piece that we've created here uh, just to, to have a quick look here. So if you come into strings, I guess the first thing you can do is choose between the different ones. So the cinematic have that sort of slower attack uh, by default. So you'd probably want to go with something like the, the pop violins. And if you're looking for individual notes, you're right. It is really hard. I've never really tried. I've only used strings really as pads. Uh, my advice would be talk to um, Dan Baker and get him to play violin on your song because he does amazing. But yeah, you can. But it the vibrato it creates is more like just... This is probably why you're saying it sounds uh, forced and crappy as opposed to just... <laughs> it kind of just sounds like you, your violin's going out of tune when you add that. 
is there an effect maybe that you could add that you could automate in and out? Like if you're using something like Logic Pro, you could potentially add an effect. I don't know. What, there's vibrato pedals in the guitar amps that you could maybe experiment with uh, to, to try and do that and maybe you know, automate that sound in and out to just get the vibrato coming in and out on certain things. But I honestly think you'd be better off going with a dedicated string app, which uh, I'm... I haven't used a lot of string apps, so I'm probably not your person to give you the recommendations. But luckily, we have an expert here in Jade Star who uh, would have and definitely has done. Uh, hopefully that helps you out. The stream is really more than meets the eye. Da, 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 da. Hello, Ronald M, by the way. Thank you for being here. Uh, hello to uh, Charlie Kelso. Hiya. Hiya, how you doing? All right, so let's, uh, I'll see if we've got any more questions. Otherwise, we will jump in. There it is. There is the chat with Patrick uh, that you can see. Uh, yep, Swarm Violins for the win. Yeah, so Swarm, and uh, I'm positive that Jade Star, if I put Jade Star Swarm Violin, I'm almost positive that she's done, yeah, she's done all the different Swarm instruments. So there you go, just search Jade Star. Honestly, if you're looking for videos, <laughs> if you're looking for videos about apps, just type Jade Star name of app. And if you're looking for videos about how to's and stuff in GarageBand that I've done, just search Pete John's thing. So it's, it's actually like, because YouTube is Google, <laughs> they're both owned by Alphabet. If you're looking for anything, so USB interface. So say so the question we had before is, how do I connect up a USB audio interface? Well, there you go. You type in Pete John's USB interface and you get a video about that. Uh, you even get how to do multiple your audio interface and your MIDI at the same time. A two-minute version if you want, if you don't have anything. What about iPad Pro with USB-C? Uh, well, yep, you got a video about that one as well. There you go. 10-minute crash course in audio interfaces. So there's a heap of stuff available for you. Which is why I, uh, yeah, again, I, I'm sorry that I answer questions with, um, with, with videos. But there you go. Uh, can we hook up a looper to the 2i2? I mean, you can use looper apps and, and then plug in your guitar or your microphone and then use a looper app on your, your iPhone or your iPad. A hardware looper... I mean, yes, you could. You'd basically just have to air output um, if you were record. If you wanted to record from a looper or record to a looper, uh, yeah, you just have to route it. So you just need to either, if you want it to go from your uh, from your two R two, just use the the TRS outputs into the inputs of a looper, or if you want to go the other way, just yeah, use the outputs of a looper into the um, inputs at the front, your line inputs at the front, and you'll be good. You'll be good to go. Yes, yes, should should indeed work fine and dandy. Alrighty, where are we? 32, 32 minutes in, and uh, we've we've covered some questions, we've covered some news and notes, and uh, if you have any others as we go through, please go ahead and let me know. Now, what have I been doing in the last couple of days? Let's dive into Logic Pro. I know this is GarageBand Weekly, but uh, it's Songtember and things just go a bit different in Songtember. So we'll dive here into Logic Pro. This is the song as it stands at the moment. And what I'm going to do, mostly because I need to go and get a drink of water, because I forgot to bring my water, I'm going to play this uh, through for you so you can take a listen to the demo version we put together. And what I need to do, I want to do some some tweaks to the guitars, and I'm hoping to do another vocal take, because my original vocal take was in chunks, and I've got a bit of a better idea of what I want to do with the vocals here. So we're going to look today. I kind of like the bass. I think the bass is sitting fine and dandy. It's just sort of driving it along. I want to add a, uh, another guitar because I think we need a wall of guitar. I think we need a left, a right, and a center guitar. Just doing some, uh, maybe some single notes uh, just to sort of fill out the wall of guitar sound. And I want to uh, play around with some vocals. Jade Star is working on the drums. So in the next uh, few days, we'll uh, be able to review some drums at the moment. We just got uh, the drummer here, which I've not spent a lot of time. I've just basically made sure that it's got the basic groove uh, of, of the song. Um, but if we have time, I maybe play around with a, a fresh drummer track that follows the bass just to see how that goes. Because as you can probably see here at the top, we have this in uh, a lot of different uh, time signatures. So it starts in 6-8, it goes into 3-8, which is actually 9-8, then goes back to 6-8, into 5-8, and finishes in 8-8, eight, eight, or standard 4-4 four, four kind of time. Uh, so while I get some water, 
<laughs> because I'm a bit parched. Uh, let's take a listen to this, shall we? This is the song called Now Choices. We have chosen to simply call it Choices as opposed to Choices in Life, just to keep things simple, which was an idea from Jade, which I agreed with from the last show. So let's uh, hit the play button on this one and take a listen. choices cuts off we need to uh, do that uh yeah no the vocals the vocal preset that we've used there and my vocal performance is what we're going to work on today uh Biarino, because uh, you're right uh so yeah we're, we're 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 playing around with this at the moment but uh yeah i, 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 I we yeah you, you, spot on we need to redo the vocals um and i need to play around with the the preset because i think i just threw on what did i throw on here like a main vocal, but then I added the space designer, which wasn't really the right sort of reverb there. So we'll start with a, a different vocal preset, I think, when we redo these vocals. Now that we've uh, got most of the song down, uh, yeah, a little sound garden here, isn't it, TC? I forgot that you weren't here the other day when we uh, when we did it, uh, when we did the, the late night session. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming together. Uh, digging it? Cool, cool. All righty. Uh, so, where do we need to start in here? Well, I want to. I want a third guitar. So I, I'm pretty happy with the the guitar parts. They'll probably be re-recorded in a few days' time. Uh, once we get Jade's drums back, which uh, she just threw in the chat here, she'll be doing tomorrow after the Apple show. So I'll make sure that you're redirected there after that. Uh, so once we get Jade's drums in here to replace these. 
it then sometimes makes me want to change up a little bit about the feel of maybe some of the rhythm of the guitars and the bass. So I'm not locking in and worrying about getting perfect guitars yet. I just want to make sure that I've got the sound I want and maybe the tones that I want. So for those that are just joining us, we've got a two guitars. We've got a guitar on the right here, which is uh, doing this business. We have our left guitar doing like big, more like straight chords. And I think together it gives it a nice balance across the sides. So you get that big sound on the left with the, it's a bit of a, uh, to me I'm going for like a Pearl Jam, like a Mike McCready and, um, not Jeff Amen, who's the other guitarist of Pearl Jam? Stone Gossard. Stone Gossard, Mike McCready kind of sound here with the two guitars there. But I think I need, I think I want like a, a guitar down the middle as well. In fact, I think maybe, maybe an option is where, is to have this guitar as the centre guitar. That might be the best way to go is if this one, double tap that, that goes to the center, this on the left, maybe we double this guitar part with a different guitar tone on the right. Maybe that's going to give it that width and that wall of guitar a bit better. So down the guts is the brong, and then you've got the balance of the two guitars playing it slightly differently on both sides. What do we think? Only one way to find out. And guess what? We're in a digital world, so we can retry things as much as we want. So let's uh, duplicate out this right guitar, because that'll change. That'll give all of our settings the same. We'll flick it all the way around to the left here using our panning knob. If you're not seeing where I'm tapping there, it's over here. So that's your pan, and you can access that here in Logic Pro by pulling this out. And this is pretty cool. So I must admit, I don't love everything about Logic Pro, but I'm getting used to this because when you bring this up, you can be in this view, but you can play with your pan here and you can also play with your input and output. So you can make sure that your input here is on the right one, which is the channel two, the right channel here of my Steinberg UR22C. You can turn monitoring on and off from here as well, uh, but you can, of course, do that just from here. So we'll uh, we'll do that there as well. Uh, Alrighty. Uh, let's, uh, let's grab the guitar, shall we? And, uh, play in our part. I'll grab a pick. I'll grab the guitar. Oh. Grab the guitar and, uh, turn on our input monitoring and hope that, there we are. I think having that playing along with our original one will just uh, will work well. So I am, however, going to center these just while I'm recording. Double tap to center the panning. Uh, just while I'm recording, because it's a bit distracting having it just in one ear. So we'll uh, we'll put those in the middle, and uh, let's let's see if we let's see if I can be a one take wonder. See if I remember this whole song. Before we do that, where's Doug Kidder to tell us to tune, tuning. Uh, by the way, if you don't have the guitar tuner, if you're starting to use Logic Pro and you don't have the guitar tuner, you need to actually go into your settings here. Uh, wrong one. You need to go into your settings here and actually customize your control bar and come into display and, no, modes, there, and turn on the tuner. So if you're not seeing that little guitar tuner, it is not on by default. They don't want to help guitarists out. So you will need to go into your settings at the top right there, go into Customize Control Bar, go into Modes, tap on your tuner, and you'll be good to go. So let's uh, let's do a quick tune up here. So we've got uh, low D, because we're in dropped, drop D tuning. About as close as we're getting. I was told by a uh, strings player to always tune up to the note. If you tune down to the note, it's easier for it to slip back down afterwards. So 
So take take it down. I'm used to tuning an acoustic, which has a lot less sensitive pegs. Trying to tune an electric is out of my comfort zone. At least of late. At least to play a grungy band, so you never had to. You never had to uh, be too in tune. I was only playing rhythm guitar and it was just power chords, so... I reckon that's going to be cool. All right, let's uh, go to our tuner here. Let's uh, turn this guitar up just so that we can hear it over the other guitars because it's going to get pretty loud in here. And I've got the headphones on here today so that I'm not going to get any bleed either through the pickups or the microphones. Because remember, even though you're recording guitars direct with electric guitars, what are pickups? They're little microphones. So if you're playing it loudly through speakers, you might think you're getting away with it, but headphones are always going to be better because you're not going to get that microphone bleed coming on through. Uh, let's see how we go with this. We'll turn, we don't need the metro on because we've got a little lead in part there. We'll hit the uh, record button and uh, go for, we'll make sure that that's triggered for recording and uh, go for it. Couldn't remember if there was one more of them or not, so I uh, yes there is. <laughs> All right. So I just have to uh, remember what I played the first time around with this because I can't actually remember. Uh, let's see. All right, so I just played basically the same riff, but... Um, I'm going to have to learn how to transition into that when I track my guitars for the final version. Yeah, the transitions. I'm going to have to practice this song to learn how to play it properly. Right, that's our part. Let's record it. All these different time signatures <laughs> do my head in. We, uh, when we were recording the other night, we had the same problem. One. So this is just a three, a three part, and then. All right, we ready? So, 
that's our part. Let's try it. Think of your choices in me of a tune called the water lets you in yeah the the riff is a bit like um uh a bit like uh yeah a song from pearl jam called i am mine i think all righty uh so what do we need we need a different guitar tone that's going to complement these original tones for that one so let's let's now shift these to give us that wall of guitar sound so this is called right so we'll go to the right for that one Shoop. This is called left. We'll go to the left for that one. We'll turn it down a wee bit. Boop, boop, boop. This is what we're now going to go with probably a center guitar. So let's just rename this. Whoop, we duplicated. Didn't need to duplicate. Ba 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 ba. Rename it to. Oh, I deleted everything. Hang on. Get, get rhythm center. All right. And do, 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 do. turn off our monitoring. And let's just listen to, just to see what this guitar sound is going to sound like before we tweak the um, the, uh, the other sound. We'll probably need to turn them down too, because now we've got an extra guitar in there creating more noise. And you're hearing there that the reason you want to record two parts here and not just grab one guitar and put it on a different amp is you get those slight timing differences that actually give it a whole bunch more chunkiness in your, your guitar sound. So don't just uh, cheat and try and shift one over there and just change the amp. It's not going to sound good. Or don't do that thing where you just shimmy it a couple of milliseconds to get the timing differences. It sounds, it doesn't sound as good. Play it one more time. It's going to go, uh, it's going to go good. Uh, I've got two right guitars. I do too. So this one needs to be renamed left. I thought I renamed it, but I guess not. Do, 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 do. Thank you for the pickup on that one. At least I got the right screen on the screen this time, Mark. <laughs> it does happen. Uh, sounds way heavier than any Pearl Jam. Yeah, I know. It's 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 Pearl Jam-ish, but it's more uh, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains kind of. More, it really is very Soundgarden, isn't it? The, the, the lower speed, the lower kind of tone. Um, yeah. So let's just uh, see if we can use a different guitar sound for this. So at the moment... Uh, what are we using the first one? Can't even remember now because I've I've changed it. So let's just uh, experiment and try something new. If we let's turn off that flashing light, that's annoying. Uh, we'll come over here to our little inbox because what we can do is just play around with different tones here. So we'll solo in this one. It's sounding like this. We'll go to guitar. Where is that guitar? Instrument patches. Audio patches is what we want, that's why. Uh, we want guitar, we want amp, and we want probably heavy distortion. Let's, uh, we don't want too fuzzy. What about big hair harmonics? Oh, God, no. 
No. I think we, we actually only want light distortion. Big sustain? No. Oh, no, that's pretty horrible. It was the Rio Grande was the one we went with originally, wasn't it? Well, that could be a different sound. Yeah, you've got a fuzzier kind of tone here. Now, you'll notice here that when we put this patch on, it changed our balance. There's a weird thing going on here in the moment in Logic Pro, uh, in the current version, that sometimes when you change a patch, it changes your input to stereo. Sometimes when you change a patch, it changes your output to stereo and puts it into the center. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not great. But all we need to do is grab this and pull it on back to the left. So these two tones together, they're going to work. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, I reckon first was Rio Grande because it was uh, Mark's suggestion last show. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. What about if we bring our centre in now? There we go. And yeah, we do have a we do have a bass which comes in a little, a little further along here, which is muted at the moment. So let's just see how these work with our bass. we finally enough need a little bit less drive, a little bit less fuzziness on that centre guitar. So we might want to just turn the level down on this drive a bit on that centre guitar now that we've got two other guitars there. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's this one, isn't it, actually? <laughs> no, we're on the wrong one. There it is. <laughs> I thought it was this one. So you got that drive. I think we just dial that off a little bit there. Bass right up the middle. Uh, yeah, so I always put my bass in the middle. It's rare that you'll find a reason in a song, in a rock song in particular, to have your bass anywhere but right up the guts. Uh, again, you can experiment. Nothing wrong with that. But that's been my uh, experience. So we've got some work to do with the tones there just to make them the three tones all work together. But overall, I'm kind of happier with the uh, the three guitar sound. Let's just listen sort of further down here in these other sections. Well, try to do it to you. Yeah, I'm really proud of the bass in this song, to be honest. 
I've, of late, I used to think that bass had to basically be down the bottom end and just, you know, the engine room. But uh, I've, I've started using a lot. Uh, for, for starters, someone said, use your thumb for the bass in this one. It will create a good contrast. Don't use a pick because I'm usually a pick bass player because I'm so bad at it. So I tried using my thumb and we actually got, I think, a good tone and uh, a good bass part in this. Uh, so this part here in particular. <laughs> it works with the guitar so nicely. Yeah, I played different parts at the end here on the left and right, which actually works well, I think. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. What do you do when you're happy with what you're doing? You save your project, you save your project. Don't forget to save your project. I nearly swore. <sighs> Terrible, that would be bad. So let's um, make these choices uh, so, so that bit of duplicated out so we've got choices six here uh, and we will so i'll send a new version to jade star so she's got the latest and greatest to uh, play along with uh, if she would like that as well at the end of the show um yeah someone mentioned uh, it'll sound really cool when it's um mastered it packs and punch yeah so i i threw it into band lab in fact in fact let's take a we'll, we'll do the vocals in a minute uh, but i'll just i'll water up i'll hydrate and then we'll do some we are going a little long here today so alert the affiliates but i threw it here into band lab and i actually threw the band lab mastering onto this and yeah an idea of what it's going to sound like uh, when it's mastered. Let's take a quick look at the mastering here in Bam. And this is the old version, obviously. So, but we'll, uh, we'll turn. What we just did. Mastering in here actually does help give it some kick. So here's the original. We'll just uh, play the track. Oh, it is playing. Listen to this. It like really lifts it. People will say lots of things, but they just don't oh. know why. Oh. Why do you care what they think of your choices in life? Yeah, so it's really gonna. It's really going to pack a punch once we actually uh, finish the mix and get it mastered. That's why, yeah, when you're doing a mix, you might think, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit soft, it's a bit, it's a bit weak, and you don't want to fix it in the master, but you can definitely enhance it. So as long as you got it uh, there, you're good. Uh, how do we share what format? Well, here in uh, in Logic Pro, uh, we showed this in the last uh, video, but. Um, Excuse me, when you go to export, uh, you always want to do it in an uncompressed. So you'd export it uh, uncompressed. Uh, so in this case, I'm recording at 24-bit uh, 44.1. Uh, so you always want to do that. And you can either export it as the whole project or you can export it as individual tracks or stems, which is what we did last time to throw it into BandLab. That's what I'll do this time as well. Once I've done this, I'll re-export it, re-stem it out uh, so that we can um, have each individual wave file because that's what I threw over here. If you go in here, the cool thing about BandLab is as I was walking around after uh, last week's show, I was able to load this up in BandLab on my iPhone. Even though I'm creating it here in Logic Pro, I could load it on my iPhone because I had all of the individual tracks here and I could turn them up and down a little bit and listen to them uh, in solo and in isolation. And yeah, it's just, it's really cool. Uh, so yeah, I, lo I love having BandLab as an option to, to be able to play around with, even though I don't use it for the recording. And the other cool thing is when we get towards the end of things, we can, uh, we can go ahead and uh, do our thing. Um, what was I saying? 
when we get to the end of it. Yeah, I can share the, all the stems. Sorry, I was getting a little bit off track there. I can share all the stems over and uh, we'll be good to go. All righty. Um, yes, if you like what I do, feel free to donate or be on the Patreon uh, because we've got plenty of cool people over there. Oh, speaking of over there, let's grab a microphone. Mick, Mick, microphone. We'll grab the handheld. Just use the AKG D5 because it's a bit of a rock song. I've got to kind of yell at it. So uh, we're going to use this as our microphone. But let's let's find a mic preset that's going to be a little bit better for this kind of rock vocal. And we'll see if there's like a rock vocal preset here. So let's mute out the current vocals that we have. And let's create a brand new vocal track. So we'll come up here. We'll press the button. Does YouTube do Apple Pay? Yeah, you can use Apple Pay to, to uh, super chat on YouTube. I do it all the time. In fact, I think I can only do Apple. Is it, is it Apple Pay? Yeah, I'm sure it is. You, the, yeah, you double tap the thing. Um, yeah, if you're on your, you can donate via Apple Pay. All right, so we'll go audio track because we need an audio track. And let's go voice. So up here in our audio patches, we'll go voice. In fact, what if we, can we just go like, if we search rock vocal, no, rock voice, no. Rock classic rock hall, we could go with yacht rock, rock snare. So, so we'll go through the voice presets instead. So we'll go here, voice, let me tap voice and what sort of voice do we want here we want no we don't want any of that stuff compression so we want a uh, one with a compression tube vocal dance vocal warm vocal pristine dry duct delay vocal i gotta tell you we'll just go compress vocal i gotta tell you um yeah a lot of stuff here, even in Logic, I was hoping Logic would be more for like musical creators. And look, that's going to sound really insulting. More for real instrument songs and music. But there's a lot more presets for electronic styles of music than there are for regular ones. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, you can indeed use Super Thanks as well, uh, which you can do after the fact. So if you're watching a show on a replay, uh, down the bottom, the little dollar sign, it'll be a Super Thanks. And I'll see that in my comments. And I'll thank you and love you forever. All right, let's turn the uh, input monitoring on this one. Check. One. Ba, 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 ba. So that's a very basic sound. What have we got on here? We've got a Channel EQ, compressor, two compressors, and a de -esser. So we don't actually have any reverb or delay on that one at all uh what about our tube vocal what does that do that's got a fat fx on there warm vocal oh that's a compressor but where is it it's only got a compressor why does it seem to have reverb on there that's weird oh is it adding sends no that's odd hmm uh, let's, uh, instead of compression, let's just see if we can find a, uh, light reverb type vocal. Uh, classic vocal? Check. But, what? Why is it doing that? Uh, vintage vocal? Ba. Tracking vocal. Cha. Stereo. What's stereo going to do? Oh, it's got a weird stereo delay on there. Uh, natural, natural vocal, vocal polish. Yeah, I should. Uh, I'm gonna have to spend more time playing around with these and actually dialing in the uh, presets. What if we just go with a straight, uh, 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 vintage vocal? All right, we'll, we'll just use that just to record with for the time being, and we can uh, we can tweak it later. Let's turn off uh, this one. Check one, two, three. Yeah, I got no idea why uh, it's actually got delay on there, but it might work for this song, and we could change it afterwards. So let me grab my lyrics. That's the other thing we need to do, isn't it? So here's the lyrics that we worked on in the last show. So uh, let's uh, let's go on and give this uh, a bit of a take on the old uh, vocals, shall we? What 
is that doing? <laughs> you know what I've done? All right, I've completely messed this up. <laughs> Don't do what Pete does. Delete. 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 Let's start from scratch. I've set that track up completely wrong. So uh, we will instead start from scratch. Audio track. There we go. Let's just add. It seems to have a few issues with... All right, we've got the vintage vocal on there. Ba, 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 ba. Check, 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 check. Ba, 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 ba. Let's just build ourselves out something, shall we, instead. So if we come in here and we go to reverb, let's just add a little chroma verb. Ja, 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 ja. Te, one, two, three. And we'll play around with this properly later. And we'll add a little delay, because I like a little uh, delay. It's a little stereo delay. Delay, delay, delay. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Just a real little bit. Real little bit. Right down here. Right down. But, 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 yeah, some patches are using a track stack. I oh, know, some use sends, some use track stacks, and uh, I, again, I miss GarageBand. I really miss GarageBand. Let's try this. Check. One, two, three, four. Um, I'm on the stereo out track. There we go. Okay. That is working. <laughs> Did I mention that I'm new to this? It's only the second song I've ever created using Logic Pro. So uh, that's why I've, I don't call these shows tutorials. I just call them uh, Pete recording and messing about in here. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get some nice delay because I think it needs that. Ba, da, da, da. We'll add some quarter note delay uh, afterwards because I think that's going to work on this track. I need to get better with my vocal plan around here. Check. One, two. choices in life People will do lots of things just to make you feel bad Why do you care what they think of your choices in life Choices Need a little break there, because this is a bit where I do some slight screaming. <laughs> they will, you yeah, can't. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna try and get a little bit of power in these uh, notes that are outside of my uh, outside of my range. Let's see. Ba 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 What I might do is for this version, because I don't have my voice in, I'm just gonna stay on those same notes. If you make it they will break it We need a change We need a break uh, A bit 
like that. Let's just create a second track here because what we need is to uh, bring in this verse slash chorus back over the top of that one. So we'll need a second track here to do that. We need a change. We need a break. And then I forgot the words. All right. Let's try that again. We need a change. We need a break. Why can't I get, Why can't I get that first word? Uh. We need a change. We need a break. People will judge you for things that you just cannot change. Why do you care what they think of your choices in life? That's where our vocal comes back in, so we will re re record from there and I'll I don't really have words for this. I'm just reusing words that I had in the, the previous version of this song. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. So sick, so sad. Wrong, one. Wrong words. <laughs> Again. <laughs> can't blame it on bad handwriting. I know, it's all written down. It's all over here. Uh, I've got, uh, oh, I've got feedback. Change word bad to small that has a softer sound. Yeah, I think you're right. See, my poor wife has to hear me, but she doesn't hear the headphones. So just she just hears her husband, like, ranting and screaming in the background. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I've never liked the feel bad. What was it? Uh, we're bad to small. Small could be good. Yeah, I was trying to find another single syllable word, uh, word just to make you feel small, because that is it, isn't it? That's that's more of the toxicity, make you feel small. And I had um, this change down here. I said uh, people will judge you for things that you cannot control, and someone said that sounds clunky. Why don't you go that you cannot change? And I'm like, oh yeah, but it doesn't work. But just cannot change. I think that works well there. And I think this section here, um, yeah, so. It's, I said too much to take. Is it all related? Is it all related? Which is what I kind of meant in the first place. So I, I do need to rewrite this final section because I want this to be more powerful uh, than than what it currently is. But uh, let's let's just um, let's just go back to this and oh we've, we we recorded that on this second track, but that's okay because these two tracks are both exactly the same. So how does this crossover sound here? Yeah, we need a change. We need a break. People will judge you for things that you just cannot change. Why do you care what they think of your choices in life?
I, uh, yeah, I think I need to do some work uh, on the vocals, but that's okay because what I can do is I can throw this uh, back into band lab and I can um, sing along to it and just sort of work on some of the, the intonation, some of the, um, the word choices there and just make sure that it all works in line with that. So I don't know, Jade, you probably don't need, all we've really added is that extra guitar, um, which is just a replay play of the other guitar part. So probably don't need that, um, probably don't need the new version of this one, but I do like the new guitar sound. I think guitars, I'll give them an eight out of 10 right now. Bass, nine out of 10. Vocals, four out of 10. <laughs> Organ, seven out of 10. Uh, drums, one out of 10, but uh, Jade fix, Jade will fix. Um, so yeah, I think my job today is to listen to the instrumental version of this, just dump it out as an instrumental, listen to it, fight, tweak those words, do a little bit of uh, searching for, for better words that are going to fit in there, that are going to still tell the story, but are going to, um, yeah, that are going to work for this song. So if we wanted to do that, by the way, uh, someone was asking about exporting before, what we can do is actually just um, mute out any of your vocal tracks if you ever want a nice uh, instrumental version and then all we need to do if i just want the wave file of this is hit the export there make it uncompressed this time we don't want the individual files uh, we'll just make sure that yes we include all the effects we don't normalize because <laughs> i hate auto normalization and then we just hit the share button and that's going to mix this down it's going to bounce it what they call a bounce and then uh, once it's bounced down, we can uh, we can play around with it from there. I can save it uh, and throw it over to my phone, stick it just into my audio share, and then just listen to it on a loop, have my notes app in the background, workshop the words as I'm singing around. And yes, I do legitimately literally walk around the streets of Adelaide singing. So if you are in Adelaide any time and you see a, a weird man in a cap and a backpack walking uh, along the river singing to himself, that's me. <laughs> And as Mark says, that is a lot of the production. It involves just listening and listening to it over and over again. The other good part of that is I, I then get the feel of the different parts. So I get the feel of the guitar and the structure of the song so that when we come to track it, which we'll be doing later in the week, so at the end of this week we'll be tracking all of the uh, guitars and vocals and uh, getting our final polished versions down uh, With the, once we have the, the drums and the bass all, all nicely synced in there, then we'll be, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go from there so uh yeah we're, we're, we're coming along we're ticking along here so uh thank you everyone for being here do not forget that uh, tomorrow we have a special special show at a special time it is our uh coverage of the apple event so we're going to find out i've called it iphone 15 launch because almost positive that there's going to be an iphone 15 announcement there uh jump in there right now hit the like button there uh set yourself a reminder to which you can do here hit notify me that'll put a notification on and i'll uh, I'll throw a link right here in the chat to it for now, but it'll also send you over there at the end of this show if you're watching live, but if you're watching on the replay, uh, you can find that uh, and everything else we do at studiolivetoday.com. How's your song timbre going? Make sure that you're uh, getting cracking on your song. Share your progress, uh, whether you do it on Facebook or on YouTube or on the Discord or on Band Lab or anywhere else. You can uh, go and do that. Expecting anything? Yeah, let, let, uh, one final thing. So let, let's make Pete's famous terrible predictions <clears throat> all right apple will uh, put usb-c on their iphone 15 pro but keep lightning on the 15 and they'll say to the european union that by the next time by the 16 they're all going to go usb-c i don't know I, I don't i don't feel that apple are fast moving on this stuff i think that there'll be still some uh lightning based iphones or they'll they'll do something like release the sc version 4 and that will be on Lightning. And that will be like the last Lightning just for people like my wife who uh, like Lightning ports. And uh, well, no, more, more to the point, likes her button on her phone, which I actually kind of miss my button. It's a bit it's a bit clunky swiping. I know we're all used to it now, but I do miss my button. When I use my iPod Touch and I've got the button, it's so nice. Just saying. Um, uh, yeah, what else am I expecting? Just just an overview of iOS and iPad OS and, and Mac OS, but I think we know most of that stuff from the betas or betas. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything. Oh, the other thing that's been rumoured is a periscope camera on the iPhone 15 Pro, which uh, you can look into what that's all about, but it's basically a way of getting a, a more high-quality, um, higher-depth uh, lens on 
your your phones. Uh, I think they're going to stick with the dynamic island. They may even make the dynamic island, which is this little uh, circular thing here on the on the 14s. Uh, they may actually even put that on the regular ones as opposed to the old style, which is this one here that has the notch. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go all island because they've had a couple of years now to perfect that technology. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get an iPad announcement. Um, the Apple Watch might get a, an overhaul. Maybe the Ultra 2 or something will come about. But yeah, I don't want to give you no reasons uh, no reasons to watch my event. But yeah, I will, I will break it down. I'll give you all the facts without the buttery smooth and all the superlatives that Apple like to throw in there. Yeah, new watch for show. And uh, I've got the old Apple Watch SE. So I'm, and mine's kind of not on its last legs, but I would, I wouldn't mind a newer watch at some stage. And my mum needs an Apple Watch. So I said to her mum after the announcement, <laughs> <laughs> you may uh, you may get uh, that one there. Uh, Apple's revenue is uh, slightly down, but earnings up five percent. Yeah, I know that's uh, when you're a two trillion dollar company. Yeah don't really have to worry that much about things like that but they still do all right that is going to do it for this one folks uh thank you for hanging out with me here today and uh as we say at the end of each and every show please be kind to yourself be kind to others and keep creating and i'll see you next time here on studio live today bye